This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or simply making a donation. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Now today I'm going to show you a ridiculously easy way to add a little touch of jazzy, fusion-y exoticness to a regular blues solo, as you heard in the intro there. Now, what we're doing here are the jam track that I'm playing over for this, which is available down in the description by the way. Um, the jam track essentially goes between an A7 chord and a C7 chord quite a lot. Um, you can use this trick in a regular blues uh, setting where you just go and say from the one chord A7 up to the four chord of D7. But the reason I chose A7 and C7 here is because it adds a little bit more uh, jazzy tension to play over that kind of chord sequence. And crucially, you can use this little trick that I'm about to show you uh, in both directions, going from the A7 to the C7 and the C7 back to the A7. In a regular blues setting, you just use it going from the A7 to the D7. So, without further ado, let's have a look and see what's going on. Okay, over the first few bars of A7, I'm just going to play some Common or Garden blues licks for about the first seven bars, like this. And let's just pause that there, because what comes next is the clever bit. It sounds like this. So what exactly did I do there? Well, I'm glad you ask. Here's the explanation. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, it's really quite simple. I'm going to take a wild guess here and assume that many people who are familiar with blues rock styles of playing let's say you're in the key of a playing over an a7 chord for example you're going to be familiar with this little run that there i bet you got loads of licks that are based on that kind of thing and all we're going to do is take this little six note run here and change one note that's it what we're going to do is we're going to take this B note here and flatten it to a B flat. So instead of on that string, I get that. Okay, so then I just come down the other string as normal. And what's great now is that that two string pattern also repeats on the next pair of strings. So I've got like a four string pattern that goes like this. And what that actually gives us is a diminished scale. You can continue it onto the fifth and sixth strings, but it gets a little bit more involved then, and it's not quite as symmetrical and easy to remember. So all you've got to do is think about... And that would be the root note of your chord there, in this case, A7. Although I say that, but the thing about anything that has a diminished property a diminished scale kind of origin like this is that it repeats every three frets so instead of starting at the fifth fret i can start at the eighth fret and play exactly the same pattern okay exactly the same uh, moves if you remember we started off with um this little move here flatten that note down to that and got this so all I'm doing is taking that up three frets and then it repeats on the next pair of strings 
and that basically gives us um, a nice cool uh, dissonant exotic sounding uh, set of notes that we can play over the A7 chord or over the C7 chord because C7 is three frets higher than the A7 and this scale moves in three fret lumps so it's good to use over both chords. Uh, in the solo that you saw earlier uh, when I was playing over the over the A7 chord uh, I was just noodling around with uh, regular kind of blues licks uh, down this end of uh, the neck at the fifth fret and then when it was time to go to the C7 play that little lick there and then scoot up to where my C blues licks are located you know And then when I want to go back to the A7, I can just play exactly the same pattern up here. Like that, and then back into some kind of A blues. Kind of idea like that. And, you know, just fitting that diminished scale into the uh, borderlands between the A7 chord and the C7 chord and back again is a great way of adding a little bit of uh, fusion-y, jazzy, funky, um, sophisticated tension into um, an otherwise fairly uh, run-of-the-mill blues solo. So there you go. So there you have it. I think you'll agree that is a ridiculously easy thing to do. Uh, no theory knowledge required at all. I mean, it doesn't do any harm if you do have the theory knowledge, but in this case, it's not necessary to uh, have any to just get the most out of this lick. And that pretty much is it for today, folks. I hope you've enjoyed the video, found it useful, informative, and maybe a little bit inspiring. And if you have, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, if you haven't already done so. And why not give me a like while you're at it. Um, if you've enjoyed the tuition, then you may be aware, but I'll just mention it in case you're not, that I have uh, Udemy courses on sale, including a brand new one on um, the playing style of David Gilmore, which just went live yesterday so if that sounds like your cup of tea check it out um, you can preview all the courses for free before you spend any money on signing up for them so check it out see what you think and check out the review section on udemy where people are saying all kinds of nice things about them and i'll just mention as well that this is the season of goodwill and i have a charity single out at the moment uh, links in the description below uh, it's a cover of the old wizard tune, I Wish It Could Be Christmas Every Day, and all proceeds go to Zoe's Place Baby Hospice, a charity in Middlesbrough which provides palliative, respite and end-of-life care to children under five with terminal illnesses. So please buy a copy of the single or just take a listen to it on Spotify. Even that generates revenue for the charity and is greatly, greatly appreciated. And that's pretty much it for today, folks. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much for your time. And I look forward to seeing you all again next time around. Bye for now, folks. And don't forget, before you go, to check out my Udemy courses, which you can see are available via my website, which is also where you can contact me to get in touch for some one-to-one -one tuition, either via Skype or in person if you live local to me. I also have merchandise available on my Teespring store, and of course, all of the links are in the description. See you next time, chaps.